I'm here at the studios of KALW in San Francisco with Paul Mason. He's economics editor of the BBC's flagship current affairs program, Newsnight, and he's author of the new book, Why It's Kicking Off Everywhere, The New Global Revolutions. Paul, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. We just finished an hour radio show talking about your book. Uh, you traveled to Egypt, Greece, the UK, and Spain to interview the people behind the uprisings. You also traveled the road taken in the Grapes of Wrath in the United States and found horrific poverty and suffering. What I loved about your book is the fact that you gave a voice to the people behind the protests. What were some of the common themes you found, especially among the young people? I mean, the most common theme you find among young protesters in this world we live in, whether it's Greece, whether it's Cairo, whether it's Occupy, is I, I call it the graduate without a future. It's the young person who's been told that the future is going to be bright if they get on the property ladder. If they do an ordinary menial job, they'll eventually get better, and that their, their, their pension is in 30 years' time going to be paid for out of stock market profits. That story is gone and they realise it's gone. And so the impact on them may or may not be hard right now. They may have a job, but there are 50 percent of people in Greece without work, 50 percent of young people. Huge numbers of young uh, uh, Egyptians have no work. And they say, look, it's a bigger shock to be told the next 30 years are going to be horrible than it is to be told the next three months are. And they are looking for very radical solutions. That, I mean, that, what I mean is they've given up on the idea that, that, that the model is, you know, you consume, you borrow, uh, you have low wages, but you can you bridge the gap between, con, between con, high consumption and low wages through credit. That's, that story has gone for them. And just as you find in Occupy or in Wisconsin, that kind of young person, you find that you kind of young person on the edge of uh, Tahrir Square in Cairo, but there are more hijabs. There's the no, same number of MacBooks in the, in the cafes, but there are more hijabs. That was it. I'm not, I'm not saying these revolutions and these uprisings are all the same right. thing. You know, but one has the right to compare and contrast and find the common thread, and that is it. The, especially the section on Greece, you interviewed so many people who've never been on the streets before, a lot of young people who just finished college, who thought they were going to get these professional-type jobs, and they realized there's nothing for them. Yeah, I interviewed, um, this was last, back last June, when, when the riots were really strong, and the Greek central square, Syntagma Square, has at this end parliament, at the other end it has the finance ministry. And outside the finance ministry, the day after the riot, I found these hundred, uh, mainly women, uh, mainly very, uh, very fashionably dressed, um, sitting on little white chairs, and there was a tent, and they were camped outside the finance ministry because they'd been they'd taken the exam to become tax collectors, and then they hadn't got jobs. Now Greece needs tax tax collectors. There aren't enough uh, tax collectors who do their jobs, so Greece doesn't take much tax or not enough tax. They wanted uh, work, so they camped out, and they were most annoyed that the riot, the black bloc. And the cops had fought each other and they disrupted the whole thing. But they tidied it all up and they were drinking their coffee, wearing their white sunglasses, you know, on the top of the head as they do. And I constantly come back to this theme in Greece, that it is the ordinary people like that. Mm -hmm. When they get angry, when they, they don't participate in riots, but they, they have a moral support for the people who are fighting at the front of the riot. It was that. Um, and again, you know, part of the job of being a journalist to try and judge what is going on in a riot situation. I'm not so interested in the 200, 2,000 black block uh, rioters. They're always going to riot. It's when the shopkeepers of a middle-class district go and they drag the bins across the road and they pull trees down and they set fire. That's when you want to start asking what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. And to, on today's show, we got a number of calls and emails saying, why don't we see the same level of anger in the United States? And... Based on the people I've interviewed, we are seeing it, maybe not in these massive numbers. The media do tend to focus on the black bloc and the violence. But you did meet so many people on your road mm. trip in the U.S. You took the road taken in the Grapes of Wrath, and you went to this sort of tent city in Albuquerque, New Mexico, that I've never heard of. No, no. I went to a, a place called Joy Junction in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is a homeless shelter. Mm. It's not a tent city. It's people living in the... in quite decent accommodation in an old school. And what they had noticed, a lot of the people they have dealt with historically have been people with alcohol and drug problems, people with broken relationships. And what they had noticed is that 
in addition to that, which is still there, you had a lot of people who had who had simply lost their jobs in lower middle class professions. So I interviewed a McDonald's manager and a subway worker, married. They both lost their jobs at the same time. They spiralled out into debt. They lost their home. They lived in their car. They lived in a motel, and finally they're in the in in the the pits of of this. And good for the people who look after them. But what what one found when you started to interview people on the floor of this gymnasium, 80 people, they're the, the acute needy, was so many people who had that kind of story, and they were really angry. One thing I would say is the, it's all or nothing in this country in terms of protest. If you protest, I mean, you've covered it yourself, uh, the, the, the incident at UC Davis, mm -hmm. uh, where the pepper spray was sprayed into the mouths of protesters. Mm -hmm. Um, there's something more subtle as well among many uh, poor people, especially among poor African American men. You find men who have already been through the criminal justice system, age 16, 17, 18. They know if they get really angry and do something, you know, violent or even threatening, they can be back in that system. I, you meet people like that in my country in the UK, but there's not so many. Mm. The sheer scale of imprisonment in the United States means that you meet a generation of people who know they don't want to be back in, in prison. Over two million people. And in the state of California, we have a three strikes law. Yeah. So if these guys have two strikes already, they yep. could go in for life. Yeah. And look, that's something that's part of the American reality. I think it does explain why you haven't had, um, you haven't had the scale of ordinary people Partisan in protest, but look, the problem is, I would, I would say, let's hope America does get to the end of of this economic cycle without experiencing what some of the acute social upheavals you've had. Because if it happens, it's not going to be pretty. No, I mean we've already seen it. The people know that the state will do whatever it takes to crack down. But I also, when I say it's not going to be pretty, I mean the the actions of look. We had in Britain, we had young inner city rioters this last summer. Some on the left were quite romantic about this. I'm not so romantic about about what happened in the British summer mm. uh, because it was um, largely... We, 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 we found out what happens when you have criminal gangs and blackberries. Um, the police lost control. And the deal in our country has been, a lot of the time, look, we have this extreme poverty. We have a low level, almost an underclass of extremely poor people and dislocated people. But what keeps them out of the faces of the middle class is, is tough policing. But what we found out in Britain is what happens when tough policing breaks down. Um, it's, and, and, and our riots were a mixture of people who had social grievances and pure criminality. And um, it's, look, it's, what, what you want is for, for, for discontent to be able to be expressed. Because if it can't be expressed, it, 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 it fires up in uncontrollable ways. And speaking of discontent, just quickly, one of the themes you found in Albuquerque is a lot of the people you interviewed mentioned war spending. Yeah, they did. That was interesting. You know, it, my job is to go to places and listen to what people really say. And I don't prompt them. And I don't, you know, often cut things out if they don't fit with what we're talking about. And... Um, because of that, I call that journalism. Um, we, you, you hear what people are really concerned about, and it didn't surprise me. It may surprise some Americans that when you go among the poor and you ask about poverty, you get the answer back: Iraq. Why so much spending? Why so much in Afghanistan? Um, the reason it didn't surprise me is because in in Britain you get the same thing. Uh, people are quite fired up, even though. What is it? It's nearly ten years since the start of the Iraq yep. War. They're still fired up about the the what it, what they see as a wasteful and and in some cases unjust. But whether they see that or, or not, they see it as wasteful. Um, I think uh, the relevance of this to America is going to be this: after the financial markets are fi finished with Greece and Europe, they're going to start with you, and they're going to say, "Why do you need six fleets?" That's the question. And this, these are the questions that we're not really hearing in the national media, these voices that you interviewed who ask about war spending. We hardly ever hear this come up in the national media. Well, you might, you might but, have the media you deserve. You need <laughs> well, to do we're, something we're about We're definitely it. trying to change that. Paul Mason is author of Why It's Kicking Off Everywhere, The New Global Revolutions. Really great book because it tells the story behind the protests. You're, you'll meet a lot of people that you don't really see. Definitely not on the cable shows. Paul is economics editor of the BBC's flagship current affairs program, Newsnight. Paul, thanks so much. Thanks, Rose.